One of my goals is always to be world number one, but if you asked me six years ago if I actually truly believed it could happen, I'd probably say no. I was never the best, you know. I was never the best junior, I was never the best coming through. Even when I made my first New Zealand team, I was lucky to get in. They only put me in the team because I had a good work ethic and I could run. People always said I could be top 20, or I could be a top 10 player, I could be a top five, but I wasn't good enough to be the top. My journey was just slower than a lot of people. I never sort of exploded onto the scene. It's quite uh, hard for me to even comprehend it, you know. I never really truly believed I could be world number one. Amazing. He's been knocking on the door for quite some time. I'm just so excited to be home. Good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah. You got the paparazzi around you. <laughs> I grew up in Greymouth. My parents both played squash. They were good amateurs, and we sort of just lived at the courts. You know, while they were at the bar having a beer, we were just playing on courts all night. But I played a lot of sports till I was about 15. Mum sent me to boarding school because you know Greymouth's very small, and she thought I could potentially do something which was, in the end, probably you know, one of the best decisions that could have happened for me. And I just had to keep moving away from home, which was very scary for me, obviously, very much a homeboy. Earning not much money, and you know, my parents helped me out massively, funding me to go to Europe and stuff like that. So the whole thing was very scary because a lot of people were sacrificing stuff for me and helping me out. You know, this past 12 months has been just the best for me and just, it wasn't in fact getting number one, but it was speaking to like my coach from when I was 13 and speaking to all those people that, that helped me when I was like 14, 15. And just going over those memories with a lot of people was something that was really cool. So it's been interesting. The first two months, three months when I was number one was the best time of my life. And then I, I went back to number two in the world and. I all of a sudden felt a tremendous amount of pressure on myself to try and get back to number one. And you know, I felt a lot of pressure in terms of people sort of judging me that I wasn't number one. And I completely lost the enjoyment in my, my squash for you know probably two or three tournaments. It wasn't that I wasn't, wasn't playing bad. I was still playing well. I was still getting good results, but I didn't have the enjoyment. I was losing in touch with people that I had good relationships with, and I just felt my personality changing. And I was trying to be someone else rather than just being being Paul Cole. Superman, Paul. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, something I'm working through, you know, having that new role of being the hunter. But those experiences will 100% help me now. Being the favourite, you know, being a potential gold medalist, there is a lot around it. Oh! oh my gosh. Oh, he got it! He's got it again! The Com Games is even bigger, personally, because it's for New Zealand. You can see what it means when you get a medal, and I want that. You know, I want that, that gold moment. You know, losing in this final last year really hurt me but for a long time. I had to do the media for the silver medal, but I was almost crying inside, you know, and I had to like hold it back and try and, you know, be happy. And yeah, I still see that picture of him celebrating and it just drives me nuts, you know, so I'm looking forward to hopefully going one better this, this time, yeah.